the 2024 SpaceX Starship update is here. The second attempt by SpaceX to send the strongest rocket in the world into orbit is now only a few days away. Even though the Starship's first voyage ended abruptly, it is safe to assume that the second attempt at an orbital launch will proceed differently than the first. Now questions arising are, when the 2024 SpaceX Starship is getting ready to launch, what are the changes made in this second launch? Hi guys, we are here with an amazing video for all of you to clear all the inquiries popping up in your minds related to SpaceX 2024 Starship launch. But before starting the video, if you're new to our channel, do subscribe to it and also press the bell icon so you will never miss an update. Let's dive into the video. First and foremost, the rocket that is being used in this next configuration, a super heavy booster and starship, is nearly completely different from the one that we witnessed taking off. The 25th build of the Starship upper stage vehicle and the ninth iteration of the super heavy launch rocket will be the next stack to try space travel on April 20th. SpaceX builds its rockets using iterative design. Hence, these rockets were constructed with significant upgrades before 120 launch event. But since then, SpaceX has learned from their past mistakes and created up to 1,000 additional enhancements to the Starship. The inclusion of hot staging in the super heavy booster design is likely the most notable of those modifications. Once the booster has done its job and propelled the ship above the atmosphere, this is an updated and far more dramatic approach to separate the two stages of the rocket. Firstly, we will discuss the specifications of the SpaceX's second launch. Originally, SpaceX intended to separate the rocket by mere inertia. To push away from the top stage, they would turn off all of the booster's engines, loosen the clamps holding it to the spacecraft, and start to turn the booster over. Using the momentum created by the booster's inevitable flip to start a boost back burn and return to the launch site, it makes sense to use it to split the rocket. Hot staging, a technique intended to preserve the maximum amount of force, has replaced efficiency as a very smart and effective way to handle it. The rocket's second stage engines are fired while the main booster is still operating causing the booster to throttle down as the rocket moves closer to orbital velocity. However, in contrast to most previous rockets, this one won't have a main engine switched off before separation. Therefore, any time the upper stage is simply coasting through space is eliminated since the force of the upper stage engine pulls the ship away from the booster. Rather, we transition swiftly from the booster's maximum thrust to the upper stage's maximum thrust. This is significant because the Starship is still under the strong influence of gravity and drag during the first stage of separation, which occurs at a low altitude. For Starship to maximize its limited fuel supply, the ship aggressively pulls back towards the surface and loses velocity whenever the engines are not operating. To allow for the hot staging maneuvers, it would be preferable for the ship to reach orbital velocity as soon as feasible. One more ring component has been mounted by SpaceX to the top of the extremely hefty launcher. The topdom of the booster's fuel tank has been strengthened to handle the thrust and heat from those upper stage Raptor engines. And the new ring is perforated with vent holes that will allow the rocket exhaust to be safely discharged during the hot stage event. Fortunately, the Starship stainless steel construction makes it extremely resistant to high temperatures. If comparable maneuvers were attempted with an aluminum alloy booster like the Falcon 9, it would be extremely risky if not done with extreme caution, but the Starship would handle it admirably. Failure in first launch. Speaking of the Raptor engines, these were the main reasons behind the Starship's first launch attempt. When SpaceX ignited the booster, three of the engines failed to ignite correctly, and during the disastrous flight, an additional five or six engines exploded in midair. Later, SpaceX would determine that the engine bay fires were caused by fuel, leaks inside the booster thrust pucks plank system. From tracking cameras, we can observe the booster in its last few seconds before spinning away. According to SpaceX, the fire destroyed control over the booster since it cut off the link between the engines and the ship's internal flight computer. 
Inadequate insulation between the 33 engines was probably the cause of the engine bay fire. Although Booster 9 was built from the ground up with strengthened shielding in the engine bay, Booster 7 was upgraded with this feature long after it was first built. Remember that SpaceX is known to use iterative design principles on all of the components of their Starship, so it stands to reason that the engines they build will be their worst ones initially. The booster on 420 was equipped with the first complete set of Raptor version 2 engines. It's tempting to focus on the engines that failed, but not every engine on the first booster was made equally plainly since their engineers are always learning and getting better. An alternative perspective on this situation could be that despite the intense fire burning within the engine compartment and the several explosions occurring close to each other, most of the 33 Raptor engines kept running until the car destroyed itself. Therefore, it should be sufficient for the weakest engines on Booster 9 to be at least as strong as the strongest engines on Booster 7. The replacement of the hydraulic engine, gimbals with electric motor controls, is another significant improvement to the Raptor engines on Booster 9. An engine gimbal is a device that helps steer a rocket by enabling the nozzle to rotate and the thrust to be directed in different directions. And gimbal systems are found in 13 of the Super Heavy Booster's engines. And as Raptors can move farther than any other gimbaled rocket engine, these devices are crucial. During the maiden Starship flight in April, the hydraulic engine gimbal was a major point of failure. The hydraulic pressure system exploded just one minute after launch, thereby eliminating the rocket's capacity to be guided. These hydraulic actuators in Booster 9 have been swapped out for electric motors. These are straightforward screw-type motors, which should be far more dependable and perhaps stop another self-destructive cycle. Elon Musk has stated in the past that ground systems are more valuable than rockets because they can be replaced quickly. While a spacecraft and booster can be rebuilt in a few weeks, losing the ground systems would be disastrous. Starship's launch mount and tower are so essential that they are frequently referred to as stage zero. The term stage simply describes how many times a rocket separates from a thrust section before attaining orbital velocity. And most rockets are either two or three stage because there is only one separation event between the orbit booster and the ship. Starship is a two-stage rocket. Without stage zero, it is impossible to even ignite the booster because the launch mount houses the majority of the systems needed to fire the 33 engines. Normally, these systems are found inside the booster of a rocket, but SpaceX designed this system to be outboarded and integrated into the launch mount in an attempt to maximize efficiency and reduce weight. And of course, there's the enormous steel launch tower, the Mechazilla with its recognizable robotic chopstick arms. Not only does this serve as a crucial mechanism for hoisting and stacking the booster, but it also acts as an umbilical connection for fueling the upper stage independently of the booster. If all goes according to plan, those chopstick arms will eventually be mid-air rocket catchers. Anyway, SpaceX has installed a completely new and special suppression system underneath stage zero to make sure that the cratering incident from the first flight doesn't happen again. After receiving one last approval from the Fish and Wildlife Services to make sure SpaceX wouldn't be pouring tainted water from the showerhead into the neighboring ocean and wetland, the agency declared on October 31st that they had finished their safety review of the Starbase property and the surrounding area. All indications are that SpaceX will move as fast as possible to get the rocket on the launch pad and Starship will travel into orbit. The full previously grounded the 165-foot vehicle after its first test launch from Boca Chica. Texas earlier this year punched a massive crater through its launch pad and spread debris for miles. If you liked the video, don't forget to give our video thumbs up. We will come again with another amazing update video for all of you.